Hey everyone, I'm Natasha Lequa and I'll be standing in for Emily Drury this week on Forbes Flash. Let's get started. Founder and CEO of Papa John's, John Schnatter, lost a lot of dough this week. The Pizza Papa's net worth fell $70 million in less than 24 hours after the pizza chain released its third quarter financial report on Tuesday. Papa John's is the official pizza sponsor of the National Football League, and Schnatter partly blames the plummet on the NFL, which has faced turbulence during the national anthem protests. Schnatter owns about 25% of the company and is now worth approximately $801 million, according to our estimates. Here's what you need to know from the past week. Who runs the world? Our list of the world's 100 most powerful women in 2017 was released this week, identifying a new generation of female icons in politics, technology, business, philanthropy, and media. German Chancellor Angela Merkel takes the number one spot for the seventh consecutive year and 12 times in total. Merkel is followed by an unexpected newcomer, the UK Prime Minister Theresa May, who is leading her country through Brexit. The third spot in the class of this year's female leaders goes to Melinda Gates, who along with her husband Bill and their foundation have distributed over $40 billion in grants to date and support organizations in over 100 countries. This is the first time since the list's inception in 2004 that the list does not include the spouse of a U.S. president. However, it is the first time a first daughter has made the list. As senior advisor to President Donald Trump, Ivanka Trump is ranked number 19 on the world's most powerful women list, trumping First Lady Melania, who is not ranked. Waymo, formerly known as Google's self-driving car project, is close to commercializing its extensive research and development that cost upwards of $1 billion. This week, the company showed off how it is fine-tuning sensors and software with complex real-life scenarios featuring other cars, pedestrians, and bicyclists. These interactions that take place in faux city streets in a 60-acre secret complex in California will help the robotic vehicles get smarter before they're launched on public roads. On Tuesday, cereal and snack giant Kellogg reported third quarter sales came in at $3.27 billion. The 0.6% pop in growth is the first time the company is showing an increase in 10 quarters. Kellogg credits their top line growth to the acquisition of a biscuit, powdered beverage, and pasta company in Brazil, which also contributes to the favorable foreign exchange rates. Wednesday afternoon, Tesla posted a larger than expected third quarter drop with a net loss of $619.4 million. The electric car maker pins the blame on the bottleneck in Model 3 production. The news of the earnings announcement drove the Tesla shares down 7%, and for the first time since May, they were trading below $300 a share. As the largest individual stakeholder, CEO Elon Musk's net worth fell $800 million and is now worth an estimated $19.1 billion, which is $1.7 billion lower than our Forbes 400 ranking just one month ago. Despite the scrutiny around the social network's role in enabling Russian meddling in the 2016 presidential election, Facebook reported another strong quarter and posted a profit of $4.71 billion, or $1.59 a share, up 77% from a year earlier profit of $2.63 billion, or 90 cents a share. On a call with investors on Wednesday, CEO Mark Zuckerberg focused more on the security and safety issues than Facebook's financial performance, and said that the company will double its safety and security headcount from 10,000 people to 20,000 people over the next year. This week in the tech world, Chevron has made their decision on their preferred cloud provider. The energy giant signed a seven-year deal with Microsoft, which is one of the biggest wins in the developing race between tech leaders for cloud computing customers. Under the terms, Chevron will move its development of new applications to Microsoft's cloud service Azure, in addition to shifting over legacy data and existing applications. Chevron and Microsoft will also share research and development and embed technical staff with each other. The contract is estimated to run into the hundreds of millions of dollars, potentially billions, and as Chevron CIO Bill Braun says, the partnership with Microsoft is a significant move for the company in terms of financial investment. Joining us now is Forbes senior editor Zach O'Malley-Greenberg. In honor of Halloween, he's here to talk about our 2017 list of top earning dead celebrities and how they continue to influence and earn money post-mortem. Just in time for Halloween, we launched our annual list of the top earning dead celebrities, uh, ranking the top 13 stars who've made the most from beyond the grave. 
dying is no longer necessarily a bad career move. Uh, from Vegas shows to licensing deals, there are more ways than ever for dead stars to continue to make money long after they've passed this mortal realm. Michael Jackson, for example, stars in a Vegas show called One, while Albert Einstein continues to get his name licensed for companies like Salesforce. At number one, with earnings of $75 million pre-tax, is Michael Jackson. The king of pop is also the king of post-mortem earnings, and the king of Halloween. He's got a new album out called Scream. He continues to make money through his Cirque du Soleil show in Las Vegas, uh, and a tremendous amount of uh, publishing and recorded music interest as well. King number two, with earnings of $40 million, is golfer Arnold Palmer. You can still drink his Arizona iced tea beverage. Uh, the company sells about half a billion cans a year to this day, and he continues to appear in advertisements with Rolex and MasterCard. Number three is Peanuts creator Charles Schultz with 38 million. He continues to earn from a deal with MetLife, including the Peanuts gang. MetLife has actually retired those characters from its ads, but the deal continues to pay Schultz millions through 2019. Elvis Presley ranks fourth with $35 million in pre-tax earnings. It's good to be king of rock and roll, especially when you have a property like Graceland. The Elvis estate continues to expand Elvis's old mansion by adding new attractions like the entertainment complex Elvis's Memphis uh, and a new hotel called the Guest House at Graceland. Coming in at number five with $23 million is Bob Marley. He wasn't exactly known as a capitalist icon during his lifetime, but in death he's become quite the entrepreneur. He makes money not just off of his music and his merchandise, but also his House of Marley eco-friendly audio products. Michael Jackson continues to stay at the top of this list uh, because plain and simple, he's the king of pop. Um, his music continues to be consumed all around the world, which then feeds the interest in his other products from his Cirque du Soleil show, to his uh, CBS special that just came out over Halloween, and, and so on and so on. Uh, the most important factor to land on this list is to have an iconic image. So if you have an iconic image, you can license that image. You can get advertisers to pay you a lot of money to be associated with their products. Uh, it's also important to have intellectual property. So for musicians to have a library of music that's out there generating money, um, or even better, to have new hits that record labels are willing to pay a lot of money uh, in, in an advance for to have you continue to put out new albums long after you passed away. These empires are maintained by a range of family members, lawyers, and estate managers. Most of the time, there's a good deal of squabbling in such situations when there are millions of dollars at stake. But uh, in most of the best cases, it's, it's, you know, kind of a consensus is built. The family works with uh, an estate manager and um, squabbles are kept to a minimum. Thanks for joining us. Emily will be back next week. Tweet your feedback using hashtag Forbes Flash and tune in every Friday morning. Same time, same place.